Hello and welcome to the Poll Worker Training School for a General Election. I'm Greg Woodger with Election Systems and Software, and we'll begin with opening the polls process. When you first arrive, you must arrive no later than 6.30 a.m. Polling hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Once you arrive and bring your materials in, open your record of elections box, remove the contents from that box, and lay those out in an orderly fashion. Next, open your provisional box, remove the envelope which contains the seals for the provisional box, seal the empty provisional box to prepare it for ballots if you have a provisional voter later in the day. Next, you will have sign-in books. On the back of the books is the oath of office. The inspector will swear each of you in. Please sign the back of a voters and clerks for each of those contests. And also on the back of those books is the watcher's oath. Also in a general election, poll watchers are assigned and, and uh, certified by the party. Please make sure they have a signed letter of appointment to serve as a poll watcher. Ask them to sign the back of the voters list and clerks list and those will become part of the permanent record of elections at the end of the evening. Once they sign the back of that as a watcher, they may watch, observe, take notes throughout the day. If they are to leave during the day and be replaced, that second person must have their own letter of appointment and be sworn in, sign the appropriate documents, and then begin their process of watching and observing the polls. Also, you will have a machine manual. Some of you will have M100s. Some of you will have DS200s. There will be an equipment manual in there, how to open and close the machine. Refer to that as necessary, and we will have an equipment demonstration in this video also. Please fill out the name badges, inspectors, and clerks, and you also have poll watchers badges. Display those on your lapel to show that you are an official working the precinct that day. Also on election day, as election official or a poll watcher, you are prohibited from wearing any kind of paraphernalia, buttons, badges to influence any voter. Also during the election day, please make a round through your voting area to make sure no one has left any campaign cards, uh, pens, pencils with candidate names, or any electioneering material. If so, remove that, place it in a wastebasket out of the view of any other voter. Open the contents of your packet, get all the posters and display those posters on the wall. You have a directional sign if you're in a large facility that they need to be directed down a hallway, place those appropriately. You have also a notice to voters if they are disabled or over the age of 70. If they ask for uh, to be moved to the front of the line, they may do so. There is a voter assistance poster. Anyone may assist a voter except the voter's employer, age of that employer, or a union agent. There are signs to how to properly mark a ballot instruction posters. That is to be displayed also on a secrecy folder. There are instructions on it as well. You will be required to have a photo ID to vote in Alabama, and a poster is provided with all of the appropriate IDs that are permissible. There is also a no cell phone poster. You're not allowed to take photographs in the polling site, except for now there is a provision where a voter may take a selfie of themselves and their ballot inside the polling site, but no, they cannot capture any other voter's ballot in that photo. No campaign within 30 feet of the polling site. That's 30 feet from the entrance door. Any voter may come into that building. Beyond that 30 feet, they can pass out campaign cards, sample ballots, but not within the 30 foot distance from the door. Provisional balloting, we'll talk about that a little later, but there's a poster that explains provisional balloting to the voter if that's necessary. Your rights as a voter, there's a poster to just explain that as well. Voting instructions, poster is to be displayed. And a notice to voters that there are complaint and evaluation forms available if they would like to complete one of those. A large vote here sign to be displayed on the exterior door is also supplied and prohibits acts of fraud and misrepresentation poster is included and an American flag. Also a no smoking sign is supplied in your packet. When issuing ballots to voters, please only open box one of each style and begin with that box. Once box one is empty, open box two of that same style and continue the process. 
Also, please fill out a ballot accounting certificate before you open the polls. You will have multiple boxes of ballots. Complete each category. All the information you need to put on that form is listed on the labels on your boxes of ballots. It will tell you box one of two, box two of two, how many ballots are in each of those boxes, and the sequential number of the stubs of those ballots. Total those and give us a grand total of how many ballots you started with before the polls open that day. Sign the bottom of that form and you will reaccount for those ballots at the end of the evening once the voting process is completed. If you receive a supplemental list of absentee voters, please strike those voters from the list as instructed by your local elections office. I mentioned earlier that a voter is required to have a photo ID. There is one exception to that rule. If a voter fails to have photo ID and two polling officials can positively ID that person, there is a election official's affidavit for identifying qualified elector. Once two poll workers sign that, print their name and date it, and they print the name of the voter they're identifying, place that document in the record elections box in envelope six, and let the voter vote without a ID. If the voter has an I beside their name or an INA, that means the voter is on inactive status. It does not mean they cannot vote, but prior to voting, they must complete a voter identification form. The forms are in your packet. Please check the box, update, have the voter complete that form with all information and all boxes completed, including their signature at the bottom of the document. If the document is not signed, the Board of Registrars in the county is prohibited from updating that voter's information in the database. Also, that form can be used for a verification. Say we have a junior, senior, and one of, the, one of those uh, two moves out of state or out of county. The Board of Registrars may authorize the voter to vote, but must fill out a uh, verification form prior to voting. When you call your Board of Registrars, have the following information, a complete legal name, a date of birth, Alabama driver's license number, or the last four digits of social security number. With that information, your registrars can track that voter's status and locate that voter, which county they're in, and if they are a legal voter in your precinct. Once the verification is filled out, make sure you receive, wrote down the name of the, of the registrar you spoke with, and on the back of the form, there is a box that says uh, verification of voter, you must list the name of the registrar that authorized that process, place that in your Board of Registrar's envelope, which is the only envelope with green print on the exterior, so that can be returned to the registrars after the election. Also in your packet, there is a report of change of residency or death form. The only people permitted to fill this form out is a family member of the voter, the inspector of your precinct, or your local probate judge, sheriff or circuit court clerk. Say for instance a family member comes in and brother or sister has moved out of state and that family member wants to report that, they can check that box family member, complete that information where their family member has moved to and that would also go in the uh, envelope for the Board of Registrars so they can correct the roles. If you're the inspector and you have knowledge that a person on your list has passed away recently, check the box inspector of the precinct and fill the information out of the voter and, the, and your information that you are reporting this back to the registrars. An investigation will be launched to make sure they find a death certificate before they strike them from the rolls. And as of my earlier conversation, those that have moved out of state, they will confirm that that person has actually moved before they strike them from the rolls. Also in your package, you'll have a pink sheet, which is a complaint form. If the voter wants to share information back to the local uh, election official, please offer them a complaint form. They can fill it out at their home. This form must be notarized. There's a place on the back for the notarization. The address for the Secretary of State's office is also provided on the back of the form. They would mail that to the Secretary of State. If it has been notarized, a copy of that will go to your local probate judge for review. If it is not notarized, it will not be considered a valid, valid complaint form. Also, I wanted to discuss assistance in voting. If a voter would like to have assistance marking their ballot uh, on the paper sign-in books, they would sign in column two stating that they desire assistance, and the assisting party signs in column three that they assisted the voter. Anyone may assist that voter except that person's employer, 
agent of the employer or agent of a labor union they belong to. They can proceed to the voting area, the assistant can mark, help mark the ballot and come to the scanner and make sure that ballot is uh, deposited and scanned into the equipment that day. In a general election, there's a category at the top of the ballot that indicates a straight ticket. If a voter would like to vote a straight Democratic ticket, all that is required is to make one mark on the ballot. Every Democratic candidate front and back will receive a vote. Uh, also, if they like to vote a straight Republican ticket, they mark the uh, oval to complete that straight ticket voting. Every Republican will receive a vote front and back. Remind the voter there may be nonpartisan items or amendments on the back of the ballot or the front of the ballot that they do not miss the opportunity to vote in those contests as well. Split ticket voting. If a voter, there's two ways to mark a split ticket. A voter could mark straight party for whichever party they would primarily like to vote in. If there's some exceptions to that, they could come and vote for a candidate of another political party uh, and split their ticket. Or another way to split your ticket is just look at the ballot, take it contest by contest, complete the oval beside the candidate that we, you wish to vote for. Also in a general election, the voter has the opportunity to cast a write-in vote. To cast a legal write-in vote in Alabama, it is a two-step process. Number one, the voter must complete the oval next to the line that says write-in. Then they need to handwrite the name of the person they desire to vote for on the line. The machine will count that write-in vote and capture that on your results tape at the end of the election day. When the machine is totaled at the end of election night on a general election, the tape will indicate how many write-in votes were cast in a particular contest, but not the names of the write-in candidates. Once your voting process slows down that morning, I have some suggestions. First of all, take your yellow sheet that has the instructions of what you would need to close the polls with that night. There are labels provided for your precinct. Please place those labels on all return envelopes to indicate where those results came from. Please place a label on your provisional box as well to identify that box has come from your location, which will make it easier to identify the sheriff's office when they pull those out for the provisional count seven days after the election. Also, if you're the inspector or the provisional officer, please open the provisional booklet and refresh your memory, read over those instructions, and have your supplies laid out in case someone does come in to uh, vote provisional. That will make the process much easier. When issuing a ballot to a voter, please offer a secrecy folder to each voter. Once the voter has cast their ballot, please make sure you offer them an I Voted sticker. If a voter makes an error on a ballot, and they bring it to you and want a, to complete a new ballot, make sure you take possession of that ballot, spoil it by tearing a corner off of it, and place it in the spoiled ballot envelope before you issue a new ballot to that voter. Now I want to talk to you about the provisional ballot process. Before someone starts the provisional process, please make a call to your local board of registrars with the voter's name, a date of birth, address, driver's license number or the last four of their social security number and let the registrars assist you and investigate this voter before you start the process. If you're instructed to allow them to vote a provisional, you removed all your supplies from your packet, hand the voter a PB3 form which is a provisional ballot form. On the top right hand corner is a sworn statement of affirmation. Once the voter completes that and signs that, they are now entitled to vote a provisional ballot. If the voter is unwilling to complete and sign that, the voter is not permitted to follow through with the process. Once the voter has signed it, make sure they drop down to the bottom of the form. There's an update portion. They complete that and sign the form. The form is perforated, but please do not separate the two components. Once that's handed back to you as the inspector, complete your portion, including which ballot style the voter is entitled to. It may require another call to the registrars that you have their address to be instructed of which ballot style that voter is entitled to vote in a provisional process. 
The reasons for a voter casting provisional ballot are as follows. The person's name does, does not appear on the list of registered voters. The person's registration status cannot be determined by the provisional ballot officer. Voter is unable to comply with the voter identification requirement. The voter has requested but claims to have not voted an absentee ballot. Voter objects to the political party identified in the list of registered voters for the primary runoff election. Inspector has knowledge the person is not entitled to vote at the precinct and challenges the person. Ballot is cast after the legal time for closing the polls due to a federal or state court order extending the hours of the polls. When issuing a provisional ballot, some counties use an orange sticker to cover up the timing marks to disable the ballot. Other counties tear a corner off of it. Follow the instructions of your particular county in uh, disabling these ballots. Also, an envelope one, PB1, is a secrecy envelope. Envelope PB2, you are to print the name of the voter on that envelope and also the line of the roster of which they sign. And then if they sign line one, the number one. Uh, if, they, if the next person would be uh, number two and so forth. Once the form is completed, the voter takes their ballot marking device, envelope one, envelope two, to the voting area. Once they mark their ballot, they are instructed on the envelope to place that ballot into envelope number one as a secrecy envelope, then insert that into envelope two. Envelope two would be deposited in the provisional ballot box, which is sealed with red seals top and bottom that clearly state provisional ballot seal. Also, now you are left holding their PB3 form that they filled out. Make sure you fold that form place it in the PB4 envelope marked for the Sheriff and Board of Registrars. Also in your provisional supplies, there is an outline form. Please give that to each voter that is casting the provisional ballot to uh, help them understand the process that they are going through. If the reason for the provisional ballot is due to an inspector's challenge, a PB3 form would be completed by the voter. The inspector would check challenge on the uh, reasoning. Then a challenge form would also be completed. Once the voter marks their ballot, returns it to the uh, inspector, please separate the challenge form, the PB3 form, and the canary copy would go in the PB4 envelope. The white copy of the challenge form would be deposited in the provisional ballot box, and the pink copy would be handed to the voter to take with them once they leave the polls. If the reason for casting provisional ballot was lack of proper identification, the voter has until 5 p.m. Friday following the election to present that identification to their local Board of Registrar's office. Now I'd like to cover the packaging of your materials to go back to Election Central that evening. At 7 p.m., announce the polls are closed. The best process is to bring all those voters into the facility, lock the door. If that's not possible and you have enough staff, send one of your poll workers to the end of the line to enforce the end of the uh, voting line process. Once the last voter has been processed and scanned their ballot, please close your machine out. Make sure the zero copy was signed that morning and all copies of results are signed that night. Package is important. You can have a great election day, but if you get in a rush and don't take your time, things can be mispackaged. So please get your yellow check sheet out and follow through the process. Uh, the best practice is make a line to the left and then someone else double checks. Therefore, you have a X across each box that every envelope has been checked and double checked before you seal it to make sure you have the proper items in those envelopes. At the end of the night, when you close your polls, make sure you open the voted ballot bin, remove all the voted ballots, and place those in a box as provided. Uh, use one of the empty boxes that you have from that day. If you do not have an empty box, uh, remove the pad or two of ballots that are remaining. Create yourself an empty box. Make sure you seal those boxes with the black record collection seal, and on the side, please place a voted ballot seal and indicate how many boxes of voted ballots you are returning that evening. The first envelope we're going to talk about is the Board of Registrars. If you use a paper roster, if it will fit in that envelope, please place it in there along with any update forms, verification forms, death, change of address forms. 
If it will not fit in that envelope, we provide a large rubber band, rubber band your notebook and or your list to the envelope to make sure it is returned to the registrars for proper voter credit. The original copy results, which is the zeros you signed that morning and the very first complete set of totals that night, must go in envelope five to be returned to the probate judge, as well as the first original results, you must complete your ballot accounting certificate at the end of the day. What that will entail is, is take the number of votes, votes that were cast on the machine, the number of spoiled ballots, the number of provisional ballots, and the number of unused ballots, which should add back to the total of ballots that you began with that day. Make sure that ballot accounting form is also placed in envelope five. The second copy of your totals, I suggest you tape that on your window or door for public viewing. The third copy would go in envelope six for the record of elections container. Again, it's a brown envelope. Envelope eight is marked for the news media. They are to be given a copy of the results from each tabulator. Envelope 10, make sure you put the copy of, of the results signed and also uh, the thumb drive and or memory card from your voting machine, it is to be placed in envelope 10 and that's clearly marked for the judge of probate. Envelope 11 is for your uh, keys for your voting machine. Envelope 12 is for any extra supplies you might want to return to Election Central that night. Again, review your yellow checklist. All brown envelopes go in the brown record of elections box. All of the white envelopes, we provide a uh, large plastic bag. When sealing these boxes, we've made a change. The uh, record elections box will be sealed with a white label with black print. It'll be marked record of elections and the provisional box is to be sealed with a white label with red print. This says provisional ballot. Also at closing, there is a seal to seal the the insertion flap, the slot at the end of your provisional box. If you have zero provisional ballots, there are items that still must be returned. First of all, do not place anything in the provisional box. It will be a sealed empty box. Indicate on your seal on the end of the box that the, it contains zero votes, date it, and put your precinct name or number on that label so we know where those returns came from. Take all of your provisional roster books, open those up, place the word something to the effect of zero ballots cast or no ballots, place that in the envelope PB4 to be returned to the sheriff, which must be handed off to the board of registrars by 12 noon the day following the election. If you had provisional ballots, indicate on the end of the box on that label how many ballots are contained in the box. Likewise, place the sworn statement, any challenge forms in the PB4 envelope, and also on that envelope, mark how many are contained in there. If you have two, put two or just indicate what's inside the envelope before you return it. The white PB4 would also be included in your plastic bag to be returned to Election Central.